Hello students, welcome to another video session on linear momentum and collisions. In this video, we're going to concentrate on question eight and question nine from the PHY 1015 tutorial sheet five. So previously we looked at tutorial question three and four, then later five and six. And in the last video, we looked at how to work out question seven. It was a little bit long, uh, but question eight and nine are a little bit short. So we can work them out in one video. Okay, so now um, in the tutorial sheet that was given out, I hope you guys are able to notice the, the difference in how the uh, the mass is, is, is written out in the first sentence. So let's take a look at that question. So if you don't have the tutorial sheet, you can just copy down the question uh, from, from the screen. Just look at it. So in the, in the question that was given out, the tutorial sheet, this value was uh, not written correctly. So notice how it is uh, in the original question. So if we just go to the question, um, in this case, uh, we're trying to find uh, in the first part, the impulse delivered to a car, and in the next part, the magnitude and direction of the average force exerted on a car. Now what is happening? The question reads, in a car, in, in, a, in a crash test, a car of mass 1.5 times 10 to the power 3 kg collides with the wall and rebounds as shown in the figure. So the figure we're talking about is this one here. So this is before collision, so as you can see, and then this is after collision as indicated. Now, if you check uh, before collision, the, the velocity is given a negative sign just because it is going to the left. And then after collision, the velocity is given a positive uh, sign. That is because it is going to the right. So, in other words, we are taking motion to the right as positive and motion to the left as negative. Okay, now let's see what the rest of the question says. The initial and final velocities of the car are uh, 15 meters per second and 2.6 meters per second, respectively. If the collision lasts for 0 0.15 seconds, find the impulse delivered to the car due to the collision and the magnitude and direction of the average force exerted on the car. Okay, so having read the question, we know what we want to find. Uh, let's quickly see how to work this one out. Okay, so now we're going to go through the question one more time, but now extracting what we need to find, or what, what they want us to calculate. So the same, a car of mass. So the first part is to give us the mass. So I say the mass of this car, is 1.5 times 10 to the power 3 kg. Okay, that's what the point is here. So it collides with the wall and rebounds as shown in the figure, the initial and final velocity. So the initial velocity, so that's the initial, uh, this is negative 15.0 meters per second. And the velocity after collision, which is the final, is equals to uh, 2.6 0, 2.60 meters per second. Okay, respectively. Okay, yeah. So if the collision lasts for 0 0.1 seconds, so if the entire collision lasts, that's changing time, or we can just write as time, of course, and collision. That is 0 0.150 seconds. Find the impulse. So in the first part, we want to find the impulse. So we know or we should be able to remember that impulse is given by force times the change in time, or we can also obtain impulse by working out the change in momentum. So uh, of course, changing momentum in uh, this file is just equivalent to mass velocity final minus mass velocity initial. So have to help you guys uh, remember this, okay? So now, in this case, since we know the mass, we know the final velocity, we know the mass again, we know the initial velocity. So we can relate impulse to the change in momentum. So here we're going to say, okay, impulse is equals to the change in momentum. So this is the same as mass final velocity minus mass initial velocity. So from the question, the mass, of course here mass is the same, 
So can we write this as mass v final minus v initial? So from the question, the mass of the car is uh, 1.5 times 10 to the power three. And then in brackets, you have the final velocity. The final velocity is positive 2.6 minus the initial velocity is negative. So don't forget the sign there, negative one by negative 15 root point zero meters per second, okay? Now, of course, um, if you simplify a little bit, this becomes 1.5, 0 times 10 to the power 3. And then this becomes 2.60 plus 15.0. Okay, so work out what is the bracket. This becomes 1.5, 0 times 10 to the power 3. And then this becomes 17.6. Okay. So of course, uh, for simplicity, um, this is the same as 1,500. There's more point moves three places, one, two, three, times 17.6. So if we did that calculation, so that is uh, 15,000, or 1,500, sorry, multiply 17.6. And we get 26,400. Uh, so we get 26,400. Okay, so remember this is impulse. Impulse has the same units as momentum. This is the change in momentum. So you have momentum, final minus momentum initial. So this value has the same units as momentum, which is mass meter per second. So of course, when you write this in scientific notation, so when you look at uh, all the values which were given to us, let's quickly go to the top part. All the values were given to us were given to us to three significant figures. This is three sig, this is three sig as well. So is this. So because of that, even our answers are going to be to three significant figures. So this to three significant figures written in scientific notation, this becomes two point six four times 10 to the power, the point has moved one, two, three, four, 10 to the power four kgs meter per second. So this becomes the impulse uh, which we are asked for in the first part, okay? So of course, when you compare with the expected answer, this is exactly what they're looking for, All right? Thumbs up for those who tried it and who actually got the answer. Now in the second part, if you look at the second part, they want two things, the magnitude of the force and the direction of the average force exerted on the car. So what the magnitude, the value itself, and the direction is going to the right or to the right. And how do we do that? So that's B now. So for B, having found the impulse, uh, you guys should be able to recall the relationship again. Impulse is equal to force, change in time, which is equal to the change in momentum. So you can, of course, relate these two to give you the impulse too, but it won't be the impulse to give you the force when you compare these two. But since we've already found the impulse, you can just go with these two. So now we're saying, so we can say impulse is equal to force times change in time. We've already found the impulse. So if you recall, we found the impulse to be 2.64 times 10 to the power 4, and that was kg meter per second. And then the time itself, the change in time was given in the question. So if you just look at that, it was given at 0 0.150 seconds. So time of collision was 0 0.150 seconds. Okay. Now, if we substitute these values into that, so this, of course, let's first make the force the subject of the formula. So this becomes F is equal to impulse over the change in time. So this then becomes the impulse is 2.64 times 10 to the power 4 over the change in time is 0 0.150. Okay, so we just need to make the division. So we divide this by 0 0.150, because that's just the same. So we get 176,000 
so we get 176,000. Now this is force, the units to come in the top. Okay. So this then can be written also to three significant figures, which makes it 1.76. The point has moved to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this becomes times 10 to the power of 5 meters. So this becomes the force. Now, remember the question is asking for the magnitude. So this is the magnitude. Now, what the magnitude and the direction? The magnitude and the direction. So what is the direction? Now remember in the beginning we said, you know, the values, if we go back to the diagram, so the velocity to the left was given as a negative, meaning motion to the left is a negative. And then velocity to the right was given as a positive. So meaning motion to the right is positive. Now if you look at our calculation, we just found the magnitude of the force to be a positive. And because it is a positive value, it means that this object or this car is going to go to the right. Since we say motion to the right is positive, so this force is going to act pushing the car to the right. So the direction here is going to be uh, to the right. Okay. So this is how you work out question eight. Okay. So if we compare, of course, our answers. Yeah, so our answer here is positive 1.6 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons. Okay, thumbs up for those who did this one out as well. So, yeah, so we can move on to, to the next one, question 9. So for question 9 now, um, let's look at it. So you're talking about a squid. So for question 9, they say, the squids are the fastest bound the vertebrates using a powerful set of muscles to take in and then inject water. To take in, to take in and then inject water in the form of jet propulsion that can propel them to speeds of over 11.5 meters per second. What speed would a stationary uh, 1.50 kg squid achieve? by ejecting 0.1 kg of water, not included in the squid mass, at 3.25 meters per second. Neglect other horses, including the drag horse in the squid. Okay. Now, how do we work out this question? So, so of course, in this case, if you look at what they want us to find, they want us to find, okay, sorry for that. So let's talk about the one that's fine. So, yeah, okay. So they want us to find the speed of a squid, which was initially stationary, given its mass. Okay, so in this case, uh, what we have to do is, so we look back at, uh, at, at what is happening. So the squid is initially at rest. So if I use MS to mean the squid, and VS to mean the velocity of the squid, so initially the, the squid is at rest. But then the mass, of course, is given to us. That's 1.5 inches, the mass of the squid. But then we want to know with what velocity is this squid going to move. So V for the squid, fine. That's what we want to know. The mass, of course, remains the same. So, of course, this is question nine. Now, if, of course, it ejects a mass of water, it means M that we call water. Of 0.100 kgs. Of course, the same as 0.1 kgs. At a velocity, the velocity of water being injected is given as that's 3.25 meters per second. Okay, so in this case, all we have to do is to conserve momentum. Momentum before must be equivalent to momentum after. So in this case, we're saying the mass of the squid. Multiplying the velocity of the squid initially plus the mass of water, multiplying the velocity of water initially, this must be equal to the mass of the squid times the velocity of the squid final plus the mass of water multiplying the velocity of water final. But since we know to say before the ejection of water, the water was not moving inside the squid. The squid itself was also stationary, implying that this thing was initially zero. This thing was also initially zero, meaning to the left hand side, you only have a zero, 
the right hand side you have the mass of the squid multiplying the velocity of the squid final plus the mass of the water multiplying the velocity of the water final. The mass of the squid is given to us as 1.5 kg. So now you have zero is equal to 1.5 kg. And the velocity of the squid, which is the one one find, plus the mass of water being ejected is 0 0.1 times the velocity of water, that's 3.25 meters per second. So I want to find the velocity of the squid. So we have to make this thing slightly different. We're going to move this to the other side. So this becomes 0 0.1 times 3.25. So it has cost the equal sign negative. So it goes to 1.5. B is 5. Okay, so from here, we divide both sides by 1.5. Because of this side, now we have the velocity of the speed final is equal to negative 0 0.1, 3.25 over 1.5. So we divide, multiply the numerators to see what we get. Okay, so we see we have 0. Um, that's 0 0.1, 0 0.1, multiplying 3.25. We get that, divide this by 1.5. We get 0 0.217. So we get negative 0 0.217. This is velocity, so the units meters per second. The negative here implies that this velocity is going to be in the opposite direction. Why is this negative? So if you take a look at this, the velocity of water is taken as positive. So if water is going to go in one direction, then the speed is going to go in the opposite direction. That's why the velocity of the speed comes out as a negative value. And then see how I'm writing my values. They are the three significant figures. The question hasn't specified. So immediately what I did was follow what the other values, how the other values are presented. So the mass of the squid was given as 0, 1.50 kgs in the question. Let me just take a look at that. Yes, the mass, the mass of the squid is 1.50, which is three significant. The velocity was also three significant. All the values are given to three significant figures. And because of that, given my answer, I've presented it also to three significant figures. Unless if the question had specified, I don't follow the specified presentation. Okay, so that's all the time we have for, for this video. Um, let's see if, uh, if I'll manage to make another video for question 10. So the, 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 the lesson notes uh, will be posted to the respective groups. For those who want a PDF version of the calculations uh, that, that have been used in this video, you can just request for them uh, using the email in the description. I can do you for one the, for the calculations. Um, yeah, but feel free to share the videos with your, with your friends, those who may need assistance. Yeah, otherwise, if there's any other question that you want me to look at for you, uh, just email me um, here yeah, in the email. Uh, specified in the description to be able to, to make a video for that question. Okay, thank you very much for uh, for finding this helpful. Otherwise, yeah, till next time.